Hello, this is Running Robert. Today we're going to be talking about the Peloton Technologies PTN Quarter 2 2024 Summary. Today is the 16th of February 2024, and we're going to be talking about yesterday's quarterly earnings report. We're going to be looking at the bullish and the bearish parts of that report. So I generally follow small cap pharma. I do a couple games. I do a little bit of everything. So if you like what I'm doing, hey, please like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And thank you. As claimer is, I did hold, hold stock before. I did sell it at 3, 4, and 5 and have really transitioned to options. I am free rolling at options at five in March. I did buy everything below two for Peloton, so I was doing very well for that. I'm an amateur investor, and any advice given should be followed up by our due diligence. And any information given is valid for today, the 16th of February. And this slideshow will not be updated, but as we get new news or data, new slideshow. So what happened? Obviously, we had a quarterly earnings report. The stock did hold some of its strength until the earnings call itself. So the largest issue that most likely held the price down was that there was no data. And we're going to discuss where the data is later. Um, we shouldn't really expect the data, but I know some people did, along with horrible cash management. The company also did keep the rights for Valisi for obesity and erectile dysfunction. There are new trials coming this year. We're going to be looking at those pretty eagerly. And then PL8177 was delayed into the first half of 2024. That was supposed to be interim data in the first quarter. That is now moved back. And the phase two for the breakout studies, the first half of 2024. And then they've actively stated they are looking for partners for all their drugs. So hopefully they can find some good ones. So the cash, so they, the company was literally running on fumes. They had no cash left when they made the deal as they received 9.5 million. Uh, 2.5 will be paid out later and had less than 9.5 to end the quarter. So they were, yeah, this is just, I've never seen a company, a company run that low of cash. Now, they later added 9.2 from the offering, which gives them around 18.7 million at the beginning of January. Um, so, and that was from the report itself. So, which should get them into the second half of 2024. Now, of course, you add that 2.5, which should come probably in the first half, 21, with about an $8 million, $7, $8 million cash burn. That's definitely the second half of 2024. There are warrants out there that could give the company a significant boost. But I really can't see them getting out of 2024 without a significant dilution event. So where is the data? So my company works with data, so I do have some ideas for it. So the company locked the database in early February 2024. Uh, the company stated that the data should be ready and released before the end of the month. Now, the uh, dry eye tries are complicated. So one, 500 people is not a huge trial. It's definitely a decent sized trial. Um, but the problem is, there's lots of noise in it. So, and that's what I'm saying is that you're going to have a lot of things that are going to affect the dry eye disease that aren't necessarily the disease. So stuff like the Canadian wildfires or pollen season or stuff like that could irritate people who are on the drug and seeing success in the drug, but they will kind of fall back. On the other side, of course, you know, obviously placebo is a hell of a drug. So that is going to impact a lot of stuff there. So I expect there to be a lot of noise. I expect that's why they did not pass the moderate trial. It was too small and there was just very hard to differentiate. So of course, there's two primary endpoints along with all the secondary, and this is being done by an outside company. So again, it's not like I'm working on this personally and I'm gonna work the weekend to get it done. That's where we're gonna go. So the end of February, start of March is what I would think. And that's about a month after the database lock up there. It is February 2024, not February 2023, but it's okay. We get the idea. We should see data soon. So the takeaway. So obviously, that's a positive. We're going to see data soon. Most of us believe it's going to be positive. We're in good shape. The company will also actively spread the data throughout ocular meetings and events. So they are going to go to a lot of these conferences and try to present their data to anyone who will listen in the hopes of finding a partner. That is very positive. Uh, so Valisi for obesity and ED along with the breakout trials. So these I'm a little bit more excited about because obviously drugs that are on the market that find secondary conditions is because they're seeing something in the people who are taking it. Now, the best example I can think of is Viagra used to be a heart medication. That's what it took for. And they found out very quickly what it could be used for. So again, most likely they have seen something in uh, people who take Felici. And so they were going to go with that. And of course, Felici cash for the deal. That is going to remove an overhang. So we'll go from there. Now, the neg negative takeaways I got this, I cannot trust this company with the timeline. If you've been here long enough, it's just not possible. 
like the company is always delayed. And again, we just see it every quarter. N stuff is delayed. 2023 was supposed to be the year of the data. Now it's 2024. Maybe it's going to continue to move back. Again, I do think the drive data will be here before the end of the quarter. But everything else, mm, not so sure. So with that inability to keep a timeline, there's very little chance for a loan or a partner at the beginning just because why are you going to give a loan for a company whose earliest approval would be 2026 and they have shown that they really can't even keep a timeline quarter to quarter? Now, of course, saying that 2026 would be the earliest for approval, that is stretching it for Palatin. It could occur. It might be December 2026. But again, it, it's going to be a while. So you have two plus years at a $30 million cash burn per year. So obviously the company has enough cash to get into the second half. So you still have two years probably from there that you need cash and then some to sell. So yeah, they're going to need a good significant amount of dilution. And of course the deal we made, they really did a little bit of explanation for what we're keeping, but we didn't, we don't know the milestone payment. So without that, it's very hard to predict what we're doing. I know we get a milestone of 15 million sales, which we got like 16 last year. Is that a big milestone? Is that like 2 million or is that like 5 million? It's going to be a big difference. And then what's the next milestone after that? So it would be good to get some color on that, but we're probably not going to get that. So dry eye data is incoming, which doesn't change the value of the stock. The price movement today was bad, but I think it had a lot to do with the company. I think one, people were expecting data, didn't come. People maybe are looking at other drug trials. They're getting delayed. So Again, I don't, I think it was more of not a bad earnings call. It's just people expected too much and the company had disappointed them. So overall, I still am going to play the data and dilution after that. The goal is, of course, like I said, with my $5 calls, with good data, that thing is going to shoot up to something hopefully very nice. I'm going to sell my calls, buy puts, because I know a dilution should be coming after that. I called the dilution with Bluebird a few months ago. It's very simple to look at. The company needs money. That's it. And then after that dilution, I'm going to look to build a long-term position in the company. But, but the original scale of what I was going to do has definitely been shifted down. Again, I just see del I've been following this company for now a couple of years, and it's just delays all the time. So again, they're getting there. I think they have a good product. They don't have a ridiculous cash burn. They're looking for partners, so definitely a lot of positives with it. But again. Uh, my ability to trust the company, especially with how just poorly they're keeping the timelines, it makes it much harder. So there is still a lot of value, I think, in the stock. But again, it's going to be based on your own risk and reward. So I hope this helped. Thank you very much for listening and watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.